Uh, like I said, if you guys haven't signed up for your Adobe Creative Crap, uh, your Creative Cloud account, it's free. They don't even send emails. Um, do it. Uh, jump into the, the Creative Cloud. And um, that way you can utilize these tools. So I've got my picture of Natalie here. And the point of, of, of figuring out a good concept is to really distort things. Like uh, you can squint, you can see the bigger picture. Uh, if I'm looking at her, she's got uh, kind of a, a baseball diamond shaped head, like a, a home plate kind of thing. I could, I could work with that. Uh, if I'm having a hard time figuring these things out, uh, I can use apps like this to, to do it for me. Um, Photoshop has this liquify button down here at the bottom and it allows me to make some distortions and I can distort things that weren't really distorted before. Um, exaggerate things. She's got a uh, beautiful eye. She's kind of got this, uh, kind of curvy lips, uh, kind of a pointy nose. Uh, if she's in a profile, uh, you see her upturned nose. Um, when you're working with, with photographs, it's a good idea to have a bunch of them. If you guys want to start off with, uh, um, especially a famous person, try and get as many photos as you can. Uh, the more references you have, the better. Just because you see them at different angles, different lighting, um, bigger pictures are better. Uh, but if you're, frankly, I guess that's a, a stupid statement to make. If you can find a small picture, a uh, more candid picture from far away, you'll be able to see the, like this, the head size a little bit more. But uh, with the Photoshop Fix app, uh, I can liquefy things. So I'm looking at uh, a lot of times people think foreheads are, are massive. If you look at me right now, uh, my forehead is massive because I have gross hair loss. Okay. Um, so I can click on that and forehead and I can bring her forehead up a little bit or I can bring her forehead down a little bit, make it a little bit wider or narrow. I can do all this stuff. I still have the likeness, but it's not enough. Check done. Uh, the point of, of this app is to do it over and over and over and over again. My forehead again, here we go a little bit higher, wider, a little less, still have the, the, uh, uh, the likeness. Why? Maybe I want to change her eyes and this is where it becomes a little bit more involved. Um, I'm looking at the, the shape of her eyes. And maybe I want to go bigger. I said that she has bigger eyes as opposed to smaller eyes. I think bigger is better. Change your distance a little bit. We go out. Starting to look a little bug eyed. So I'm going to keep them thin. I'm going to change my tilt again. So she's sad versus a little bit more uh, like a sexier photo. So you have those angles. Um, and her nose. If I'm not going to change her eyes again, I can just go back to uh, clicking on her face. Um, I suppose I can change my camera there. Um, bring the cheeks out a bit. I want a little bit less of a jawline. Keep her thin. Um, you know, what? I'm going to leave the nose pretty much as is. I want to make it a little bit smaller. I can. Uh, her mouth is where, um, like that's kind of her trademark. She, she's got this really like W'd mouth. Um, 
some craziness uh, like on the, the edges of her mouth. That's just something that I see pretty much first. Um, and it's really pursed, it's really thin. She's starting to look a little stupid there. Liquify. No, she's smiling. That's more Natalie. If you've seen Game of Thrones, that's kind of what I'm going for. Just to maintain the likeness. I want to bring her forehead up a little bit. Nose is fine. Anyway, I get my likeness. I'm happy with it. Uh, I feel like I can I can work with this now. Um, I can throw it into other apps, just like we were doing yesterday, appropriating uh, to see what I want to do on a sheet of paper. Uh, I can save it to my camera roll. And then I can I can throw it into a, a fresco app. I can throw it into um, sketchbook. So I have this as my my Natalie portrait. I can. Uh, draw on top of that, change your opacity, just to see what like my original line work uh, should look like. like. The basic shape of the head. She's a lot more narrow uh, than I would have thought about uh, initially going into my design. Uh, start off with the, the shape of the head, bigger ears, uh, the kind of bulging eyes. So as much as I am tracing this, it's it's a lot of me kind of learning a little bit about my subject and how uh, she's going to evolve in my my original drawing. So I can use this, I can draw on my uh, my iPad, I can completely render things uh, a lot better, a lot more detail. Uh, but for right now, um, I really want to to focus on variety. And so, if I'm I'm looking at this, I can still see a little bit of a likeness. Uh, maybe I can exaggerate some more things though. Um, for your first few uh, passes at at going into exaggeration, um, you can use the, this app. You can use facial distortion apps uh, galore. I just like the Photoshop stuff. Uh, it makes us sound a lot more professional. Uh, or I can uh, really just start laying down some thumbnails. So I'm gonna stop share here and go right onto my uh, my desk. So looking for variety in head shapes, I've got my picture and I'm going to use uh, the original photo. Um, and I'm thinking of, of just simple head shapes right now in a, a pencil, something that uh, I can, uh, something that I'm comfortable with. If you're even more comfortable, um, I suggest using your pen for your first few go rounds, uh, just because you can't erase it. I don't want you to, to sit here and think that, um, all this is going to be uh, beer and Skittles right now. Uh, you're going to be making some mistakes. Uh, and a lot of times those mistakes are, are happy accidents and it looks good. Um, this is just thumbnail sketches. Thumbnail sketches, blueprints, possibilities for my, my broader thing. So I'm looking at her and my original, my original thought is big picture. Uh, head shape. I said she kind of looks like a
for the baseball diamond. Home plate. Mr. Ball. Yes, sir. So if I was going to do this on my iPad, would I do it all in Adobe uh, Photoshop Fix? You're the artist, Carmine. Um, I just showed you an option. We've looked at um, Fresco. We've looked at the sketchbook. I think the Fresco one would be really good if you look at the uh, the Court Joan ex examples um, uh, for the really stylized, really cartoony ones, just the single lines. Uh, you can use... Uh, I would I would recommend the the vector pen that we used yesterday, uh, just to have that non pixelated non pixelated line when you zoom in. You can, like you can print it out really really large. Um, you have a lot of options. That's the the point of having those apps. Is uh, I like I like the airbrush tool on the um, the Adobe Sketchbook or not the Sketchbook app. Yeah. Sketchbook Pro, that's not Adobe, that's Autodesk. I've got that going for me, and I really like that tool. So maybe I like drawing in, in the fresco, I'll take that drawing, throw it into um, the, the Sketchbook app, and, and add my airbrush on top of my, my drawing, okay? It's, it's up to you. I'm not gonna grade you uh, lower if you decide to to use Notability. Um, a kid a couple of years ago, Justin Sanchez, and I think Sergio uh, did the same thing. Uh, they did so much with Notability uh, and just using layers with highlighters. Uh, you guys are, are tech savvy. Um, I just wanna make sure that you're hopefully using some of the, the ideas instead of just really tracing, okay? If you end up transferring a little bit more than Whatever, make sure I don't know that. Just, I'm, I'm fine being lied to that way. You don't have a, a tracing paper in front of you. And that's a, that's a big no-no. But if I'm doing this a little bit more traditionally, I'm thinking of like the shape of the head. Um, um, she's got kind of thinner eyebrows. I'm showing a lot of distance in between. Uh, you can go Loomis method if you want, and just to say, you know, I want to have the bottom of her nose here, brow. If you want to mark those things in, go for it. Um, edge of her nose, it's kind of upturned, so I'm going to have a little bit more of the, the fallopian tube. Make sure that I can see some dimension uh, in your final drawings. Try not to Try not to leave it as a coloring book. If you go coloring book, um, make sure that it's it's involved enough, like a uh, uh, like you're sitting at Bush Gardens and getting drawn. She's got a little bit of smirk going in this direction. Get that blocked in, and then she's got a. And this is where I'm really taking some shots at her. Um, thinking of likeness, thinking of, of the, the shape of that, that mouth. Uh, the head shape, I can thin in a little bit more. And come out and refine inside of that original shape. Uh, eyes are a little difficult. Um, try to get them symmetrical if you need to draw one and transfer the other. Uh, we did that at the beginning of the semester or just really simplify them. Think about almonds, think about um, um, like wedges. If you're smiling, uh, you'll have more wedges and uh, cheeks are, are bringing the eyes up. Really observe your, your reference and pick out uh, the easiest thing or whatever makes uh, something stick out a little bit more. Like on, on her, she's got a little bit of tilt to her eyes and she's got a uh, heavy mascara and not a whole lot on the bottom 
eyelid. And in the end with caricature, especially quick sketch, uh, you know, that kind of looks like this girl. This kind of looks like her. It also kind of looks like uh, Natalie Dormer. Yeah, that's, that's what we were going for. But in the end, it's, it's kind of formulaic. We bury the eye a little bit underneath the eyelid. So I'm, I'm happy with this head shape now. And uh, I can bring bigger ears out. She's got kind of a massive ear over here. A little bit less on this side, but just for symmetry. And I know I've got hair that comes down. I can exaggerate that. Still working with my entire arm too. Uh, hopefully you start to see that a lot of this doesn't change from day one, working with the entire arm instead of uh, just sitting here, wristing, 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 wristing. And then I, you know, I get to a stopping point and I kind of want to try something else. Maybe I try a different medium. Uh, maybe I want to be able to erase. Maybe I want to uh, really butcher this and see how far I can take this exaggeration. So I went really stocky here. What if I tried to fit Natalie's face into a longer head shape? A box. Can I do this? Let's see what that looks like. Uh, ears. I'm really making fun of her forehead here. Got some wide eyebrows. And you'll start to see things that uh, make a little bit more sense to you. Maybe your nose changes a little bit. Um, your style changes a little bit. Looking at your reference. Give yourself a bunch of options. See which one you like best from those thumbnails, from these uh, quick sketches. Different styles of noses. And again, there's resources galore. If you want to find uh, a YouTube video of someone who's already drawn your, your, your famous person, if you're going famous, Pick and choose. Will we lose points if we just do this lady with you the, um, for all of them? No, uh, I think it's, I think it's kind of boring. Uh, if I get 40 tons of Natalie Dormers, I have a lot to compare it to. If you're trying to compare it to uh, one of my completed drawings, um, I'm not saying I'm, I've, I'm more gifted or talented. And if you show me up, you show me up. But uh, if you're giving me kind of weak-wristed um, versions of things that I drew, my recommendation is to never draw something that I have something to compare it to, OK? Uh, if we're, especially for this conceptual thing, for this, this caricature. Um, I've never seen a, a, a drawing of uh, your grandmother or your grandfather. So I have nothing to compare it to. I don't have this frame of reference. I've watched all of Game of Thrones and I've seen a lot of Natalie Dormer. Um, that's why I don't let you guys draw the Joker anymore. It's, it's, it's trite, it's overused, this will, easily become trite and overused. And I've got this picture of Natalie Dormer in my head and you're just duplicating it. I've got a lot to compare it to. Give me something that uh, changes the way I, I, give me something new to digest. That's my suggestion. Uh, no gun to your head. I really like Natalie Dormer too, Mr. Ball. I was gonna draw her. All right, um, go for it, okay? If you wanna draw her, draw her. 
I recommend otherwise. Give me someone that I don't know. So experiment. Hmm? I, I'm not sure if this would be uh, considered like tracing or not, um, but I was planning on like using Photoshop to accentuate certain features and then go use another one of the apps to like draw it, draw that out. That's professional I, enough for me, Carmine. Uh, you're app smashing, you're not just tracing on one app and you're appropriating an image. Uh, and as kids, when we're tracing, we get a lot of dexterity, we get a lot of muscle memory. Uh, I can blur out that image or I can, um, I can blind the, uh, the original photo uh, in that layer and see like, how this is supposed to look on my paper and I can uh, redraw that. I'm fine with that, Carmine. That's not, that's not cheating okay. in my book. That's, that's a, a means of, of coming to an end uh, artistically that you're being resourceful. Do it. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I can look at her like in the sense of a, like a, a really cartoony cartoon. And I'm still going to focus on that lip shape. And you can look at other cartoons, look at like Family Guy, Simpsons, uh, even like if you guys had a Nintendo Wii trying to piece together those things. Uh, simplified shapes, starting to look a little Black Dahlia there. Um, I started with the inside. You know what? Screw that. I don't like that. I'm going to work on a different design. I'll go a little bit more traditional with my, my grip. Uh, and I say, you know, I want her to be Uh, in my look at New Yorker too. Uh, the New Yorker is a, a really good kind of quick sketch uh, way of cartooning. Uh, we're talking about caricature. Um, I use caricature and cartooning kind of synonymously. Uh, if you want to use Cartooning and caricature synonymously uh, do that. Really bury the eyes on her just because she's lit up to make more of a kind of a seductive thing and this is really cartoony that you couldn't see me drawing. Simplified shapes. She's got some really high cheekbones. But again, trying to do a different design, maybe I don't go heavier with the cheekbones. You'll see a lot of similarities with the variety that you do. Um, those similarities are, are you just, you're making conscious decisions on, on what to exaggerate, what to keep, what to go. And then I can, uh, once I'm married to one or uh, I like a design a little bit more, uh, I'm more pro something like this. So I'm going to refine that. That's where I'm going to go to my, my next drawing, um, and really look into how I can, uh, incorporate this design on a new sheet of paper on something that uh, I'm going to to give to her. I'm 
I'm trying to impress this person with uh, this kind of comedic portrait likeness of them. And it can be, like I said, it can be uh, really focusing on Loomis method and, 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 and uh, making it more photorealistic. Uh, it can be kind of cartoony. It can be a little abstract like we did yesterday. You can throw this into a, uh, uh, a bunch of these photo editing generators and it looks fine or at least it looks interesting. Um, now there's, there's apps. I think I can, I don't know if, did um, Tech give you guys the Tune Dream app too? I don't know if that was one of the ones. I don't think I have that. Okay. Also, um, does it have to be so like polygonal? Like, does it have to be so polygonal? Yeah, like does it have to have such like straight sides? No, you can you can be as organic as you want. Uh, the point of the caricature is just to maintain some likeness. I'm not a huge fan of what I'm doing with her. All right. Again, just I'm adapting what I have over here uh, into something a, a little bit more traditional, fine art. And uh, are we going to be going over this in marker? It's up to you. Uh, just like we did yesterday, you can go over pen, you can go marker. If I want to keep it uh, a little bit more realistic, uh, maybe I just stick with the carbon pencil or the, the graphite rather. What about like the black color pencil? Yeah. That would be all right. And then I can like color it in and like the, the 2B. I would go a little softer than the two, but maybe just use your, your sticks and your rag. All right. I'm getting to a point where I'm, I'm getting a little bit more comfortable with uh, her face. Not a fan of that brow. Um, you can look at kind of the T and really get this rhythm down. Wait, so I don't really understand the difference like for the big project between the graphite and colored pencil one and then the continuous line in ink. Like, is the only difference that we're using ink over it? It's just style. Uh, okay. it's, it's completely stylized. It's uh, you have the the continuous line and you can do a continuous line with a colored pencil. The point of a continuous line is that it's, it's a solid line. Um, the, uh, the first one, just looking at your Loomis method, making sure that your proportions are right based on those thirds and fifths, um, uh, deviating minimally between them. And then adding your value, however you're going to add your value, whether it's with colored pencils and 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 graphite or just graphite and uh, charcoal. Uh, you guys are are the artists when it comes to that. Uh, the, what we did yesterday was the continuous line. We gave you a bunch of different ways of looking at that. Looking at the way Vince Lowe did his stuff, really really scratchy, um, versus really really graphic, like we did on the iPad uh, with the the Fresco app. Um, and then today is is cartoon. There's caricature, there's cartoon. Uh, you're choosing which method you want to use. And I'm, I'm happy to give you guys that opportunity to experiment with your, your styles. I don't want you to just uh, half-ass it and you know, I did one, this is what I'm turning in. This isn't a finished product. I want, I want finished products for, for all of them, whether you're finishing it on your paper like I'm gonna do with her, 
uh, or on your iPad with the, the apps, you have to turn in a, a finished project. And they're going to look different because of, uh, because of the style that they are, whether it's Loomis method or really stylized. I know we're just doing the face, but can you show us how to do like the, the hands on the chin? I'm not going to draw the hands on her chin. Okay. Um, the hands are a, a different ball game. We're not going to do that. Just make sure like if she's regular, don't give her a pencil neck. We're trying to show a bust. So usually a bust is uh, head, neck, shoulders, clavicle. Uh, if you're showing me just this, I'm fine with that. Uh, if you want to do the hands, feel free to do it. It doesn't change from day one. You're just breaking things down into uh, simplified shapes if I'm doing her hands. Uh, I see my angle here connecting with my chin uh, and my jawline. Uh, I know that I've got a knuckle, a knuckle, a knuckle, a knuckle. You really don't have to do too much more than that after you uh, fill out your, your contour along the edge. I have the pad of my palm. That's, except for adding value, that's how I'm blocking in the hands. But you don't have to do that. Uh, you don't have to block in hands. You don't have to draw the hands. You can uh, stylize it, uh, design it, uh, in the vein of like a like a, a face figure study, uh, just like we did with the the seated female. If you didn't finish the the fabric in the background, uh, we just add a little bit of value to her. Okay. Mr. Bull. Yes, sir. So I have two questions. So, did you say you like right? You recommend uh, doing the caricature in pen? Or? No, it's 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 how you want to. Look at the styles, the, the court, there's a picture on canvas, the, the Court Jones styles. If you wanna do a caricature more realistic, doing it in pen's probably a dumb idea. Uh, go back to your graphite, um, do it that way. If you wanna do it a little bit more cartoony, then yeah, draw it out in your, 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 your graphite and then go over it with a marker or a pen. Um, if, you're, if you're doing it more abstract, maybe you just stick with the marker, maybe you do it on your iPad. I don't want you guys to feel like I have to do it in this medium. I'm giving you suggestions here. I'm giving you suggestions in your specs. Um, take those suggestions with a grain of salt. Uh, there's nothing that, that says like this, this particular style of caricature is going to be more successful than this particular sky style of caricature. Um, aesthetically, a, a, a finished, Family Guy style caricature looks really, really good. Uh, aesthetically, a, a painting of a caricature uh, like what Court Jones does is very, very good. Uh, and everything in between has levels of success. It, it, it's, all, it's all dependent on uh, you putting in the effort, you drawing, uh, you showing a little bit of diligence, and it's completely up to you. You, you choose you're finishing medium. All right, and uh, for the, so like, I, I wanted to draw my mom for the, the colored portrait and the graphite one. Okay. And then for the third one, could I do like, like for example, my, like my sister, my brother, even though, like does it have to be someone you look up to or could it be anyone? Uh, it can be anyone. I recommend doing Jesuit appropriate things. Um, so like doing my brother would be totally fine, right? Yeah. Okay. Your brother's not a vicious criminal, is he? No. <laughs> no, I just thought, like, I remember reading somewhere, like, it had to be, like, someone you look up to, but I guess I was wrong. So, it, yeah, it could be anyone. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of Pablo Escobars being drawn. Uh, not a fan of that anymore. Um, movie characters uh, that are not necessarily Jesuit appropriate. Uh, if you want to get political, get political. Make sure it's coming from a good spot. I'm fine with that. 
Um, one of my students did a, a, a good kind of street art style portrait of George Floyd that's, uh, that's perfectly fine. I'd like to see a little bit more artistry in it, make it your own instead of just copying what somebody did on a mural. Um, perfectly fine with things like that. Uh, that's a, a good way of, of making a statement without uh, harm. You've got all this creative license to, to make it your own, make it more interesting, perhaps. You can do a, a bunch of these. You can uh, kind of create a, a coloring book style thing. Like if I inked her, it might not be a bad idea to for me to look at uh, professional portraits of her uh, or other ways people drew her as a caricature. Steal some ideas from them. Maybe I didn't push this, this exaggeration enough, um, but she's still, she's still deviated. She's still exaggerated. Maybe I just, I, I would, I'd want to focus on doing a little bit more with her. And either I start over or I try and fix it with, what I've been doing, maybe it, it comes together with the value. Um, when doing your cartoons, really focus on, on giving yourself a lot of options. Experiment, that should be your first few steps. Even when I'm getting into this stage, um, I'm still experimenting. I'm still changing shapes. I'm still, um, I'm still trying not to get burdened by details. So there's still an element of quick sketch going on. Um, if I want to give her the lollipop neck, this is the project to do that in. Clavicle. I had to redo the one that we did on Monday. So which, what's that method called? The one on Monday? The Loomis method. And, Loomis and method. yeah, that's the, the first one where you're blocking everything in with your fifths and your thirds, making sure that your proportions are correct. Mr. Ball, for the caricature, do you have to draw a neck? Try not to just leave a floating head, honestly. Um, it's a, a good idea, even if you wanted to draw the entire body. You guys know what caricatures look like, um, just because you've been places you, you've seen, uh, you've seen caricatures done. Uh, try not to just leave a, a, a head. If you have a head and you want to make it look like, like, a, like an emoji kind of thing, like a customized emoji, that's a caricature. That's a cartoon. That's a subversion of, of this person. 
I'm fine with that. But don't try not to just leave something. If you're drawing like this, don't leave just the head. I'm going to go grab a soda here in a minute. My blood sugar is starting to drop and I can feel it. So I will be right back. Just clarifying, guys. Um, I want you to experiment. I want you to to try new methods out on top of what you you you've you kind of learned in the last few lessons with the Loomis method, with the the adding value at the beginning of this, the course. So um, don't don't feel bogged down. Like it has to look like what Mr. Ball is doing. Uh, that's not the way this course goes. That's not the way uh, the studio life goes. Um, I want you guys to really experiment with with different ways of, of doing things. We talked about how to draw at the beginning of the semester with observational drawings. Uh, that really doesn't change with anything. We just, we just have the opportunity to turn into something different now. That's that's. That's the thing, and there's a million ways of turning things into different things, right? So have some fun with it. Use your tools, use a bunch of different tools. I'm here to answer questions uh, today. I'm going to finish her, and then I'll I'll, I'll talk to you guys um, about your individual projects. That's going to be uh, more so tomorrow and Friday, uh, finishing up our our portfolios. If you have individual questions, I can help you out. If you have questions uh, about your uh, your way of doing things, if you're going to sit there and bark at you know, what materials should I use? I'm going to tell you that you're the artist, okay? Uh, Mr. Ball, I'm drawing her in graphite, or I'm drawing her in marker. Uh, how can I improve upon this? That's when I'll be able to help you out a little bit more, as opposed to me saying, you know, you have to do it this way or, 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 or anything along those lines. I'm not gonna do that, okay? You guys don't have questions. Uh, feel free to to take off. You guys have your discussions due tonight. Um, if you want to work a little bit more independently on your project, go for it. Uh, just know that I'll be here till ten thirty, uh, if not later. I'll get these videos posted. I'm going to have to start uh, loading things up on YouTube. Uh, the links are not working very well. Uh, for some of you, they are working. Uh, for some of you, they're not. I don't know why. So uh, if you're in need of help with Loomis method or anything like that, I think those videos are, are working. But what we did yesterday, uh, those links are not working. Um, try and get that figured out. But otherwise, uh, so I, started, Mr. I started uploading oh. stuff to an old YouTube channel. Yeah, for me. Is, is there a w possible way I could do my uh, Loomis method project on my iPad? Um, yeah, you can always draw on your iPad. That's fine. Okay. Just because I know, like, with the first one, that's, like, not the caricature or still line. You still do Loomis method on your iPad. You're okay. blocking whoever you're drawing in uh, with your fifths and your thirds. Got it. Okay. You guys kind of spoke loudly uh, in one of the, the attendance projects that you really just didn't want to work too much with your iPads. And 
as much as that surprised me, I'm, I'm not going to make you work with your iPads. If you want to, though, go for it. Yeah. I'm going to answer questions with a lot of words. Is this the big? Is this the biggest project we're doing? It's your biggest portfolio. Next week, your final project is going to be your biggest project, where you're going to make your project proposal. I want to do this uh, particular project, meaning uh, it's not just drawing another face. It's I'm applying this lesson to uh, this concept. I'm applying uh, what we did with observational drawing. I'm applying what we're doing with portraiture. I'm applying what we're doing with um, you know, the iPads or, or this particular means of rendering. Th that'll be your biggest project. This is just exposing you to portraiture. Mr. Bulk, could we like choose to do like one um, of our drawings on the iPad and the other two on paper? Yep. Okay. Mr. Bull. Yep. Uh, do you want us to sign up for like all the Adobe apps or because I just did the Adobe Fresco because I, I could create an account and then when yep. I tried I couldn't manage to like sign in on the other Adobe apps. Hmm. Use which, whichever one you want to I guess I don't know why they're not letting you uh, like I don't know like what to sign up with because I created an account and then when I, I sign in with like the Adobe, it, it like costs money for the subscription. Yeah, one of them requires like a subscription, the others are free. Which one requires a subscription? Uh, just straight up Photoshop, not Photoshop fix. There's one just called Photoshop. No, that we, one just need a, we just need to fix. Yeah. No, but normal Photoshop costs. Yeah, normal for your computer. Yeah, that that's that's a, a monthly subscription price. Which if you guys are it's going the same into design, on the iPad. It's the same thing on the iPad? Yeah, to use uh, Photoshop, not Photoshop Fix. Um, it Just use the, use the free ones, guys. Thanks for letting me know that. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mr. Ball. Yeah. Uh, when I try to go on Adobe Fresco, it says like it says I'm out of storage and I need like so and so amount of gigabytes. Can I? How do I like get around that? Just I'd imagine you're gonna have to delete apps or delete pictures or I don't know. Uh, that's a question for tech. Okay. You know who I'd email for tech? Mr. Lennox or Mr. Uh, Davila. Okay. I would start with Mr. Lennox. All right. Okay, thank you. Oh, yeah. and also, um, for the caricatures, are do you kind of just like take certain features and then like you're just distorting them? Yeah, exaggerating them uh, and maintaining likeness. So that's the, the point of the, the caricature. If I'm drawing this and I'm starting to lose uh, uh, her, I need to change something. Okay. Uh, so if I'm, if I'm exaggerating for the sake of exaggerating, I'm going to lose the likeness and, and it's not going to look like her. Um, let me find the, there's a video with, uh, Obama, uh, that that's a really good explanation of that. I'll show you real quick. Mm 
Let me share this real quick with you guys. Share. New share. Right. So just watch this real quick. I'm not sure who asked that, but. Oh, that was me, Shane. Hello, I'm Court Jones, and welcome to the first video in my course on the art of caricature. This series will be divided into two main sections. The first part will cover caricature fundamentals. For those of you new to the art form, or even for experienced caricaturists looking to improve their core skills, the second part will be filled with intermediate and advanced level exercises that are designed to help improve your exaggeration abilities and give you more creative ways to solve caricature problems. As with all the other Proco courses, there will be plenty of free lessons, but we'll also have a premium course with lots of additional demonstrations and longer versions of the free videos. We'll go more in depth on each lesson at proco.com caricature. To give you a better idea about me, I've been doing caricatures professionally since 1996. I've taught caricature to people in theme parks, private workshops around the world, and I was an instructor at the Watts Atelier for many years. I started my career by doing live quick sketch. Then I moved into commercial illustration, where I applied my traditional training to drawing and painting caricatures. What is caricature? Most of us generally know what a caricature is when we see it, but there's a lot of misunderstandings about how to define it. Most non-artists usually say something like, it's a portrait where they make you look ugly, or the artist just takes your worst feature and makes it bigger. Statements like that make my head want to explode. The goal of caricature is not to make someone ugly. It's not even about making fun of them, although it can be. And there's a lot more to it than just making one feature bigger. A caricature, at its core, is a portrait where the proportions are changed to highlight what makes a person different from everyone else. Hopefully, the result is funny. And ideally, a caricature will look more like the person than they look like themselves. But how is that even possible? On a traditional portrait, if you change the proportions incorrectly, without intention, you'll lose the likeness. But when it's done correctly and intentionally in a caricature, the likeness will be even stronger than the photo. The mechanism which makes that possible is called exaggeration. What is exaggeration? Think about how you're able to recognize a face. Now, the science of facial recognition is complex, and there's a lot going on in the brain that I am not qualified to discuss. But when you see someone you know, one of the things your brain does is compare his face to every other person you've ever seen. Even though the differences between faces are relatively small and can be measured in millimeters, when you put those differences all together on one face, they add up to a totally unique looking person. Facial recognition occurs when our brains notice those traits which differ from the average. In this photo of Gene Wilder, one of the traits that's distinctive about him is his large downward pointed nose. When we see that feature made even larger and pointed in a caricature, it's an instant cue to our memory of what stands out about Gene Wilder. So when we exaggerate distinctive features in a caricature, we're making those tiny differences in a face more obvious and bringing attention to them, triggering the brain's memory more quickly. Exaggeration is just the act of exploiting the brain's natural ability to recognize one person from another. To illustrate this concept in the simplest terms, think of a perfect square. A square is a visual representation of the average of all rectangles that have ever existed. This perfect square will be rectangle A, A for average. 
Now, let's look at a rectangle that is slightly taller than the average. We'll call that rectangle B. If I'm asked to draw a caricature of rectangle B, I just need to observe how it differs from the average of all rectangles, which is our square. We can see that rectangle B is slightly taller than the average. So in order to caricature it, I'm going to exaggerate how it differs from the square. Rectangle C, with its stretched proportions, is a caricature of rectangle B. The traits that made rectangle B different from the average are now even more obvious. Faces have a lot more going on in them than simple rectangles. So let's look at some faces with obvious deviations from the average. We saw earlier how Gene Wilder's nose seems larger than average. So in his caricature, his nose becomes even larger. Josh Gad's nose, on the other hand, is shorter than the average. So in his caricature, his nose becomes likewise smaller. BJ Novak's eyes are slanted more downward than the average. So that trait appears more extreme in his caricature. And Harrison Ford's nose and mouth are more crooked than the average. So his caricature features an even more crooked nose and mouth. I'm pointing out only one feature from each of these actors' faces, but a good caricature takes into account all of the deviations from the average and reshapes all of the proportions. You may have figured out by now, this means that in order to understand how to caricature, you have to be really familiar with the average head. Here's my diagram showing the proportions of the average adult male Caucasian head. You can find diagrams like these in art instruction books. My favorites are those by Andrew Loomis. Every artist should already be familiar with this type of diagram, but this is especially important to those studying caricature. Memorizing the various standard proportions and distances between the features is key to figuring out how to exaggerate each new subject you draw. This diagram will be the basis for all of your caricature decisions. In the premium version of this video, I'll break it down and explain this diagram and its measurements. Of course, if you're not from an area of the world that's dominated by those with Western European features, the average diagram may be a little different for you. But for the sake of having a common starting point for the average face, we're going to refer mostly to the adult male Caucasian head. If you're not comfortable using the Caucasian facial type as a basis of comparison, that's totally fine. Make your own average diagram that represents the faces you're normally around where you live. The overall proportions are going to be the same as this diagram, but details like the eyes, nose, and lips may be different. What's next? In the next video, I'll show how to apply these basic principles of exaggeration using step-by-step -step demonstrations to create original thumbnail. So those are, that's his, his interpretation of it. And I think that's as really as good as you can get. Yeah, um, making sure that whatever it is you're exaggerating is done intentionally uh, with homage to your, your, your reference. If it's not, um, then you're, you're definitely probably going to start to lose a lot of your, uh, your likeness to whoever it is you're drawing. Okay. So whatever it is you're exaggerating, dumb down your exaggeration. Like all right, his, his eyes are, are downturned. So I'm going to exaggerate that. It's not his eyes are downturned and this like, focus on the one thing. Like I should probably drag her eyes down a little bit more, a little bit more. Um, that's the, the point of exaggeration is to maintain likeness instead of turning her or whoever it is you're drawing into uh, someone that doesn't look like who she is or he is. Okay. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ball. Sure. Have a good day. Likewise. Thank you. I'll stick around. I'll finish her drawing. Uh, if you guys have questions for me, I'm more than happy to field them.
don't forget your uh, your discussion that is due tomorrow night or tomorrow afternoon. Uh, Stephen Schmitz and um, uh, Alex Balagon satires and and comics basically talk about one of each. some different tools. Really coming back to finding my, my core shadows again, and I'm just going to dictate over me drawing since you guys aren't having questions. If you guys have questions, just interrupt by all means, uh, do so. And I will quit drawing and, and help you out. Mr. Ball, yeah, I'm having trouble with like the teeth of my caricature. Can you send me an email of your reference? Teeth are difficult. Uh, it'll go back to what we were talking about with lips on Monday with uh, a hockey puck. But um, send me an email with the the image. Okay. Biggest thing with teeth. Um, just thinking without looking at your reference yet, uh, you got to make sure that they go around the face. So. Yeah, it's just every time I attempt it, it like, they look jagged and weird. If you're drawing Steve Buscemi, he's got pretty jagged, weird teeth. Well, my, uh, my person has like very distinct teeth and I don't think I can, I don't think I can just draw like regular teeth and get away with it just because of how distinct they are. Okay. As soon as you uh, stay doing it. Uh, 
Um, as soon as you send it, I'll look at it. Let me know when, Landon. Tony, have you seen the, uh, you there, Tony? Have you seen the, um, the caricature that Sergio did of your grandfather? Yeah, I actually have a t-shirt with the caricature on the back of it. Oh, the La Gente one? Yeah, awesome. he was able to get a few extra. Awesome, good. No, have you seen the, like, the entire drawing, the entire portrait? Like the reference photo? Like before no, the, uh, let me see if I can find it. I've only seen the shirt, I believe. Okay. Yeah, that was, that was our best shirt ever, I think. We should have, we should have marketed that to um, alumni. You know, made a hell of a lot of money on it. Yeah, we're, our family was laughing a bunch about that shirt. We love it. Good. All right, I just sent it, Mr. Ball. All right, let me find this thing for Tony real quick. And That's what he did. Yeah, I hadn't seen the full thing with the flag. Is that the same boy who did the profile picture you have for Zoom? Yeah. Uh, caricature? He's up in uh, UF right now. He joined a frat, and that's kind of what he'd been doing uh, to get initiated. Basically, he's been doing a hell of a lot of artwork. Oh, that's funny. Um, so. He would do this stuff in class, just a bored out of his mind. He got an iPad. All right, so <laughs> good picture, Landon. If I'm doing this, Landon, you there? Hello? Yes. All right. Um, yeah, he's got uh, he's got really really rabbit teeth. Okay. Yeah. If I'm focusing on the the shape of the the mouth. It has a little bit of an up arch. I know it's logic, but. Um, have you seen the Sandlot, Landon? Yeah, he looks like, uh, he Sorry. actually, and yeah, he does. Look at, I mean, I'm pretty sure you can find reference photos of, of that. I've seen, uh, a picture of Squint smiling, um, the caricature of it. Yeah, it's funny in, uh, in Logic's most recent, like, music video, he actually, um, he, he did a feature with Eminem and he couldn't get Eminem in the music video. So he had to get like a, a body double. So he also got a body double for himself and his body double is squints. That's awesome. All right. So, uh, I, I've got the shape of my mouth here and I'm thinking of, uh, his teeth and you, you can see kind of the, a bit of the cheek in here. You can see a wedge of the cheek here. You can have the teeth come out of there. And then when this blocks in, it gets, I'm making it really small up here towards the back. And then it, he's kind of Mr. Ed, kind of horse teeth. Yeah. And keep in mind that like you're seeing into the mouth. So you're going to see a, like a Nike check down here. So bottom lip. And then this thing here. 
So you're going to see the tops of your back teeth if you want to go this in detail. So this becomes his back teeth, back bottom teeth like molar. Okay. Um, and then I can change my the interior a little bit up to the tongue, which would be about here. But for these teeth, like he's got a relatively decent uh, tooth to gum ratio, but his front two teeth are, I mean, these front four teeth are ridiculous. So I'm focusing on this area the most. Okay, so I'm going to have my front four teeth pretty much in that area. Um, the center line comes down here. So any tooth that comes out on this left side, like my front tooth, arches that way. Still keeps arching this way. And then as you get further back, you don't have as many lines. Same thing over here except for we're only going to see a little bit of that tooth. And a lot of this will just, I mean, you can, you can drag that cheek in a little bit more. Uh, when I draw teeth, I try and focus on, or a little less on my center lines or these lines delineating and just a little bit of shadow to like dictate where these teeth come up and change direction. Uh, like if he has the canine tooth here, there's a little bit of a point to it. And then my gum doesn't go all the way to the tooth. This is all in shadow underneath. And I can eliminate some of my my uh, my pilot lines, my um, construction lines. Make sure that uh, I'm adding a little bit of value. And then this is where uh, I'm telling you to think back to what we did with the, the hockey puck on Monday. Uh, make sure that it looks like it's going around the face. So darker along your edges, brighter towards the front. And then you can subtract out. Just a little bit going back. So think about your teeth. Like if I'm looking at a hockey puck from a ant's eye view, basically, like it's coming at me and it's flat. If this is Logic's teeth, um, I go heavier on my sides, fading in, so it comes around, and then even more so on your edges. And this is looking straight at him. Little bit indicator. I have a peak for my gum. It doesn't have to go all the way down to my tooth. Exaggerate that center line of your teeth a little bit. You can drag it up as opposed to coming down from the gum. You don't want it to look too much like chiclets, especially if you're drawing a little bit more realistic. Just make sure that your teeth look darker along the edge as they're uh, receding into your face. Okay. Simplified, All right. simplified shape is starting with the mouth. If you want to do the gums first, you can. Um, wedge for the, the top teeth comes out a little bit this way. Um, a lot of dark in here. I mean, you can just black out. 
the bottom if you want. If you don't want to show the bottom teeth, you don't have to. Darker on my sides, darker underneath the uh, the lip, just like um, if we're doing eyeballs, this becomes your, your eyelid. Uh, and you're burying the gums and the teeth underneath your eyelid just to give it some depth. A little bit darker in your corners. Go back to what we do with the, the first few drawings with the, the still lives. Uh, play around with your, your, your value. Make sure that you've got enough dark kind of going around. I'd probably show a little bit of my bottom teeth, just maybe not um, that back edge. You don't have to show that over there. Uh, if you want to show tongue, just pick an arch somewhere around here. Simplifying enough without losing uh, too much of the, uh, the definition of your teeth. Bury the tongue underneath the teeth. Drag that down a little bit. Probably want to go a little bit darker on my gum lines. I'm using a six right now, just really lightly. It might be a better idea to use just a blending stump instead. Light source is heavy from the, the right side, so we'll just cast a little bit of a shadow. That way, try and eliminate some of my line work. And for bottom lip, he's got kind of a broader bottom lip. Catches a lot of shadow underneath. There's a lot of shadow coming up here. And I'll eliminate my highlights in just a minute and get the, the top lip in. It's kind of narrow and thin in comparison to the bottom lip. And just looking at it, I can, I mean, once this is all kind of grayed out, I can pull out my highlights afterwards. Redarken your shadows. Look at old Looney Tunes uh, to see like uh, a more simplified shape. Um, it sucks to say it, but you can look at um, their old um, like 1940s World War II depictions of uh, Asian people. That's a, a good reference to exaggerating his teeth. It's extremely racist. Those were different times, I guess. Don't draw every tooth, Landon. Just really stylize some of them. Look at horse cartoons. Yeah, this looks a lot better. Good. He was looking kind of depressed the way I was doing it. Well, he's got a song for that, so.
Mr. Ball. Yeah. Are we coloring in the caricatures? It's your choice. Okay. Uh, would I like to see some color? Yeah. Am I mandating it? No. I think uh, with the the uh, the amount of projects you need to do for this particular portfolio, maybe not adding color is a kind of a lifesaver. Maybe you do it in graphite first, and then if you want to color it in one of the apps later, go for it. Uh, if you like the the graphite version of her or him, whoever the hell you're drawing, uh, I would strongly consider leaving it. And then if you want to add more to it later, you can do that, or you can do everything in post uh, digitally just to make it a little bit more unique. Will it help your grade if it's colored? Yeah. Um, but do you have to do colored pencil or pastel or, or whatever? And we haven't even done pastel. So no, you don't okay. have to do color. Will it help your grade? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Have a great day, Mr. Ball. Likewise. Have a good one. You too. Have a good day. You too. We'll stick around for another half an hour, guys. I'm going to kill the video, though, just so it doesn't take so long to render. And I'll start posting stuff on my old YouTube channel so that it's easier to view. Maybe I'll just start live streaming stuff. Who knows?